Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Blue Liquor Shills, Desley, Sir Spazzits, Spassels, Banker Scum. Banker Scum? Yes, Banker Scum. I'm a useful idiot, and uh, today I want to talk about Banker Scum yet again. And this time it's about uh, the securities industry. And uh, most people know that uh, mortgage backed securities had a lot to do with the economic collapse of 2008, and that this whole securities industry is uh, generally problematic. And uh, just a quick refresher, of course, uh, securities are uh, loans and debts that are uh, reconfigured, diced and sliced, and repackaged as new exotic um, investment uh, vehicles, financial instruments, um, giving big investors uh, another crack, uh, a way to profit. And uh, most people are familiar with mortgage-backed securities, um, which are uh, securities based on mortgage loans and when we had a, a collapse in the real estate industry um, a lot of these mortgage backed securities became uh, worth a lot less especially when at present we still have 22 percent of mortgages are still underwater um, after housing uh, commercial I mean um, residential real estate lost about 30 percent of its value um, from its height in 2007 so we have all these various classes of securities including a video I did recently on a new class of uh, rental securities backed by rental properties, which uh, obviously has a lot of pitfalls, but that's a topic I covered in another video, and uh, feel free to check that out. I'll attach it below. Um, so we have uh, mortgage-backed securities. We have uh, commercial mortgage-backed securities, and that's what mostly what I'm going to talk about today. And this is all part of that uh, class of securities um, that are problematic. Another example of that is... Uh, asset-backed securities that are backed by credit cards, home equity loans, auto loans, and student loans. Just to use one example, we have a trillion dollars in student loan debt right now and a very high ratio, record levels of uh, student loan default. And of course, it can't be expelled through bankruptcy thanks to a law passed under the Bush administration. So now we have another bubble in student loans and uh, these are, are going to cause some damage at some point when the student loan bubble burst. And that, that could be soon. A lot of banks are getting out of the, uh, the student loan business. And um, so this could uh, be a wake-up call that something's coming. But uh, anyway, let's let's get back to uh, what I want to talk about today, which is commercial mortgage-backed securities. And obviously, uh, compared to residential real estate uh, mortgage-backed securities, these are backed by commercial properties. And there would have been a huge collapse in commercial real estate at the same time, there was a huge collapse in residential real estate back in 2008, but they uh, quickly let them roll over the terms of their debt obligations and staved off um, this part of the crisis, uh, which would have been substantial. We had a lot of uh, store closings, a lot of retail closings, a lot of high-profile retail closings, and uh, this significantly damaged the value of commercial mortgage-backed securities. And, in fact, um, there was a sudden decline in the value commercial mortgage-backed securities and regular mortgage-backed securities in 2007-2008, and that helped contribute to the collapse of Lehman Brothers at the very heart of the economic collapse, as well as the domino effect of, of having to cover credit default swaps and county party risks. So that's why it rippled through the entire industry. And to give you an idea, 2007 banks issued $288 billion in commercial mortgage-backed securities and two years later, by 2009, after the collapse, there was a mere $2 billion in commercial mortgage-backed securities, a loss of nearly $286 billion uh, of industry, nearly 98%. So let's, it's fair to say the commercial mortgage-backed security industry was essentially wiped out um, after the collapse. So here it is, 2013, and we're halfway through the year and the industry has issued $84 billion in commercial mortgage-backed securities. So we're on track to recover about half of what the industry was just previous to the collapse. And uh, interestingly enough, the mortgage-backed security, the residential real estate mortgage-backed security industry is back up to about $1.5 trillion. And uh, so we have collateralized debt obligations and collateralized loan obligations at their highest levels since the collapse. So uh, we're back to where we started. And, um, and of course, did we learn anything? Well, apparently not, because uh, uh, studies have shown that underwriting is poor and collateral is poor. 
and U.S. regulators, and this is the problem we had with um, these securities in the first place. So collateral quality is, uh, U.S. regulators have warned that collateral quality has significantly deteriorated since the uh, commercial mortgage-backed security industry restarted in 2010, that the uh, lack of credit standards is extremely comparable to pre-crisis levels. So in other words, the entire securities industry has been uh, reconstituted and is just as dangerous as ever, if not more so. And uh, part of the reason this uh, commercial mortgage-backed securities have shot up again is that borrowers were refinancing loans at ultra-low interest rates. And it is these new refinance loans that are getting securitized. Otherwise, we would have a much larger constitution reconstitution of that industry right now. And um, the fact is that this, uh, this uh, rollover of commercial real estate debt is what saved us, uh, or saved the United States from having a commercial real estate collapse along with its uh, uh, residential real estate collapse. And uh, to put some more perspective on uh, the danger that we are at with this entire derivatives and securities industry reconstituted, is one difference is that the Fed, Federal Reserve, currently holds $1.4 trillion in these mortgage-backed securities, these mortgage bonds. And, uh, of course, initially over the last five years, we were told that at some point they were going to, going to try and market them and sell them in the market. But now, apparently, they, they've realized that they uh, really are not going to be able to sell them. 22% of mortgages are still under water, so a lot of these uh, securities are, are still damaged goods. And um, the Fed currently holds $1.4 trillion in, in these mortgage-backed securities. And uh, they're buying $65 billion a month of mortgage-backed securities as we speak. So um, so that's pretty interesting. I, I hadn't heard the ratio before. So QE right now from the Federal Reserve quantitative easing is, is uh, out of $85 billion six, uh, a month that's spent. Um, $65 billion of that is on mortgage-backed securities. So while we have um, the Federal Reserve uh, being one of the few buyers of mortgage-backed securities uh, at this level, and we still have the industry not only uh, trying to unload uh, more and more of all the toxic mortgage-backed securities from the past five years and for the, uh, from the pre-crisis, from the pre-collapse uh, environment, but we have the industry cranking out um, tons more mortgage-backed securities now um, in this environment. So it doesn't, doesn't sound too good to me. And um, it's projected that by 2025, the Fed will still own nearly half of those mortgage-backed securities, even 10 years from now. And I would suggest the number is going to be quite high, a lot higher than that, because if the new plan is not to sell any of them, uh, they're going to be sitting on most of those $1.4 trillion dollars in mortgage-backed securities and mortgage bonds 10 years from now unless something miraculous happens in the economy. So uh, so anyway, there's the, uh, the gruesome picture. It's a little dry because there's a lot, of, a lot of details there, a lot of economics, but uh, I assure you this is something to be concerned about, that the uh, securities and derivatives industry has been practically reconstituted um, back to its pre-crisis level, the pre uh, 2008 economic collapse levels, and uh, we haven't learned anything because underwriting is still poor, collateral is still poor, and uh, these uh, vehicles are fraught with danger. And then, of course, we add the fact that now we have Blackstone and others uh, uh, stepping into marketing rental-backed securities, and uh, we have uh, the whole uh, securities industry collapse potential uh, once again, only on a much larger scale and with the Federal Reserve already tapped out. So, other than that, everything's fine. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one, too.